Okay, this video is going to talk about um, customization. So I'm going to open the welcome screen. So this is sort of what it looks like when you first open it up, when it's installed freshly, that is. It's got a few little hints across here, and this will start up all the time unless you uncheck here. So uncheck that so it doesn't show every time you start up Max. All right, let's jump right into it. We're going to go here to File, run down to Preferences. And the first thing we're going to do is, if, if you've got a computer that's strong enough, you can up your undo levels so you can control Z back further. So by default, it's set to 20 uh, levels of undo. I usually set mine to 50. Um, I don't know how handy that is or not for everyone, but I found it very handy in the past. Um, uh, auto window and crossing by direction is very handy and I like to go right right left for window crossing and um, that's just a selection method that I had mentioned in another video and that'll come up in um, that'll come up in a, in a different video uh, and you notice in here you can you can change a lot of things if you go through these these settings but we're not going to worry too much about too much about those in this one because these are just the necessary things for this customization. Uh, and under files, convert local file paths to relative. Um, that will, once done, that will remain the default for all your projects until you change it. Okay, and then uh, let's see. Oh, you could, you could change uh, auto, auto backup settings here. Um, Usually the default is fine. Um, okay, and then let's jump over to I think the last one is is gizmos. Gizmos are um, any of the transform tools like the move tool, rotate tool. Uh, you can completely control their their size and um, you know di different settings to your liking. So this is something that something that you may want to experience yourself. Um, just kind of play around with some of these settings and you can you can always go back to default on this so all right so we covered that so the next step is to come up here to this a clean space in the uh, the gray bar up here and right click and we'll click on customize okay in in here you can see these are uh, we're in the mouse tab for customized user, user interface and most of these are good, but um, one thing I like to turn on is lock, lock the orbit in uh, orthographic views. So orthographic views are supposed to be just that views that are straight on from the front, or from the top, or from the left. And you'll find yourself sometimes automatically rotating around, and it's really not that useful for um, anything that uh, you may do for real flight uh, model purposes. Uh, I don't know. This this would be up to you, but I like to I like to lock that down. Um, also, you can change how that you how, how you zoom in on things. Um, so uh, let's see if you by default if you zoom in, you can see anywhere the mouse point is. You zoom to where that mouse point is, and I find that to be handy. So I usually need, leave that at at, at default, but we turn it off for the perspective view. Um, let's see if it changes without. I hope you have to actually close it. So now it's gonna it's gonna just always zoom into the same spot no matter where you're at. So that's a thought. Um, I like to leave them like that, but I do turn on this this lock orbit. Um, okay, so from here we're gonna go to back up here and right click again, and these are getting going to control the different windows that are showing up on screen and some that we don't need so we're gonna turn turn some off and turn one on so uh, the command panel you'll see is that one there we want to leave that on that's that's the handiest screen there is I like to leave the ribbon on because we have control to turn that off through a button here and a button over here so I usually leave that on uh, viewport layout tabs would be this uh, this thing over here where it's not very useful it takes up a little bit of space we can get rid of that 
brush presets that would be these guys here we don't use brushes for what we do for real flight we use just certain portions of this program so that's space we can open up um, let's see did I already get rid of must have got rid of the time slider already the time slider we, we can get rid of that that's just for animation purposes we don't need that and we'll get rid of the projects folder uh, which we're setting right here because we can always get to that over here and I would like to instead have in that space the the snaps um, roll out so these are different snap types that are much handier than having the project folder list up here and we'll go over stuff we'll go over things like that at another time okay let's see and now we'll go down here into the viewports and we'll look in this little plus menu here in the viewport and we'll go to configure viewports okay and in here you can you can see that the uh, the texture map quality is set in this first uh, pane here for display performance under this first tab so if you bring in your image of the plane that you're trying to you're trying to uh, use as your um, uh, use your background at 512 pixels it may be a little bit a um, little bit hard to see or it may be a little bit blurry or stretched out so you can change this up and try higher settings depending on your on your computer but I like to go to 1080 for myself and um, uh, I usually leave everything in the, over here alone and then under anti-aliasing I like to at least put, turn on two times now if you're if, just do one thing at a time here and, and, and see how it works out and know that you can come back here and you can change these settings and um, you know you might you get, you'll get your performance back so oh, I, I didn't mean to go to 1080 I'm at 1024 I've got I've got monitor <laughs> resolutions in, on the mic uh, you can customize your backgrounds for your viewports if you'd like to put in your own custom picture back here or if you don't like this gradient you can change that to a solid color um, there's a few things you can do there layouts uh, that window that we get rid of layouts over here we could we could come here and change our layouts but I've never found any other layout but the four and I, I to be very handy and I usually just use the, the single window uh, most of the time anyways we don't need safe frames because safe frames are really gonna be for setting up um, animations and things like that so that they'll they'll show up on different types of screens so it's not useful for us uh, regions not very necessary statistics now if you would like to see your statistics for your triangle count to be always on screen triangle count is important because we're limited to 135,000 polys for um, for 3ds or not for uh, real flight um, and so triangle count is important we also don't need um, the vertex count or the frames per second but over here we would like to get a total and and the polys uh, or the triangle count with what's selected and then we'll just show that in the active view so this yellow line that shows up over a viewport that's your active view so when you apply that and click OK we'll see we got we've got a running count here and that'll change as you add objects to the scene and keep that keep a an uh, active count for you uh, view cube so this is the view cube over here in the corner and you can grab a hold of this and you can move it around and to move around your scene orbit around and use it for navigation some people find it handy some people don't you can change the size of it you can make it very tiny you can make it very large uh, you can make it only show up in the active viewport um, or you can turn off the view cube altogether um, uh, I, I would say that 
it's handy to leave this small and and just in the active view um, in some cases I guess it's nice to have it there um, but it's not really a very necessary thing uh, you can navigate using just your mouse and the keyboard and it should be fine so we'll leave that there and only in the active view and this is the steering wheel and that would be oh I there's a couple of little arrows that show up to help you uh, move around so if you're gonna leave the other thing open you might as well leave this here too so okay now you see we've got we've got that all set up um, and then another thing to note is we've got as much real estate as we we can really get here except for if we're working in an active view we can expand that view and then we could be working here and if you became a master of keyboard shortcuts and you didn't really need the tools on the side here or maybe you you know you, I, don't, I don't know maybe you just become such a pro you could hit control X and you'll see that'll give you the maximum space um, to model in. So, yeah, that's Control X. So once you get this all set up and, and you like the way it's set, we'll go to Customize and Save UI Scheme. And um, save this in the default location or somewhere else. I guess, I guess you can save it anywhere you'd like. But I'll just call this uh, Real Flight. Real flight layout. I can save that, and you can change your theme to the light theme like it used to be. Leave it here, but we'll we'll set it like this. Okay, so um, that should show up over here on the next restart, and that's something you can get back to. You can change between different uh, workspace layouts. All right, thank you.